Hello and welcome everybody, it's Jay Wits here with a really special small little side series of videos. I was able to get footage for five different Nintendo Switch titles because uh, Nintendo flew me in to New York to check out their press event for the Nintendo Switch. It was extremely awesome. This came uh, pretty much just a couple of hours after we saw the Japanese presentation uh, over here in New York. It, was, uh, it ended at midnight, I threw that video in and got about two hours of sleep and then it was jump right back on and demo the Nintendo Switch itself. I'm not sure uh, exactly when I'm going to get all these videos up, mostly because we have a really long flight coming back from the east of this country <laughs> all the way to the west of this country. It's going to be a long flight, it's going to take up a lot of my day, but I figured if I'm going to get one video up today, it should be the big title that everybody's talking about. Um, undoubtedly the biggest launch title for the Nintendo Switch, and that is Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. A uh, small little warning on my end, I accidentally brought an older capture card to this event. Um, so this isn't 60 frames per second capture, that's just due to the limitations of my capture card. Um, it's 1080p 30 instead of, should have been 1080p 60. So all my footage is going to be that way, I'm going to tell you guys in each video just in case people ask, oh this doesn't even look like a full 60. That said, um, I don't think this game was actually giving a full 60 at any given point. Um, I would have to like go back and look at maybe uh, some other footage from some of my other friends that did capture it in quote unquote 60. Uh, I know a big issue that a lot of people actually had in this game uh, when they just played the, um, and you've probably seen on-screen footage for this, uh, for the demo that they had at E3. It's like, oh man, it's really chugging on, on the Wii U. I wouldn't say it was quite chugging. I mean, you can see what we have here. But I also wouldn't say that it was uh, bringing you a full 60. So if that's something that you're worried about, um, I would say it still exists to some extent. Anyways, uh, speaking of the E3 demo, that existed. You could play it on the Nintendo Switch. That was actually the only playable portion. Um, but what I did instead is there were hands-off sections where you could actually go along with a, uh, a Nintendo guide and they did three different uh, gameplay sections um, and we could just watch, but still capture the footage directly. So I went ahead and captured all the footage directly that, that I could. Um, there were three little mini sessions. This is the first one. It was talking all about shrines. So actually, I uh, talked a bit over it. You're going to see a lot of battles, so I figured I would be fine just giving you guys an intro. But uh, in the combat, enemies drop weapons. You can swap them in or out. I think we saw a few weapons um, that maybe we haven't seen in past demos. I, at least my presenter said that we haven't seen the hoe before. I actually did quite a bit of damage, I was surprised. And uh, here are the shrines. They're sort of these little mini puzzles. They have uh, different requirements of you. This one seemed really, really simple. Just had to deal with winds, um, giving that Wind Waker feel. You use the cloth to jump over a couple of small chasms and uh, collect treasure. He said there were uh, over a hundred of these. So these are just... I, I hope they sort of replace like the hidden grottos that you've seen from other Legend of Zelda games where they're little mini sections full of puzzles and little goodies. Uh, that said, I did ask, and this is the big question on a lot of Zelda fans' minds, is uh, are there big temples, you know, the, the kind that takes several hours to beat instead of just a bunch of mini puzzles? And to that, unfortunately, my presenter said, uh, I actually don't know at this point. Uh, maybe he did know. Uh, either way, you're just being honest. That was the first of the three demos, I found it to be the least exciting, so I threw it out there in the front. But uh, this next one, I believe the theme is horses. It's all about horses. Uh, in the meantime, here we're seeing uh, you can have a couple of different elemental arrows, fire arrows, uh, light the explosive kegs on fire. You can see these uh, these blue Balka blends. Um, they're actually brutal. I was uh, just got another chance to play through the demo. I think one hit from them does exactly two and three quarters hearts of health so when you're playing in this demo where you have uh, no additional heart pieces or anything like that you actually get wrecked pretty hard but that is sort of a uh, thing that can happen in the regular game the idea is the game just opens up and you're free to explore my presenter said this was by far the most challenging zelda they've ever played in terms of uh how quickly you can just get wrecked and uh, he sort of likened it to like Skyrim, you know? You can make one wrong turn in Skyrim, a, a giant throws down his uh, his mighty gauntlets, and you're dead. And you get 
rocketed into the sky for some reason. I don't know if I've seen that per se here, but I've definitely seen enemies that can just destroy you. Uh, another little bit of this demo was just showing the ability to cook and craft. Over an open flame, you can grab uh, the variety of different stuff that you've picked up, cook it, make it stronger, make it better. It's also the first time, it's really funny to say, but the first time I've seen rupees in this game. I don't think there were actually rupees in the E3 demo. Uh, at least uh, that's what he said, and that's how I remembered it. I just remember it throwing me off, like, oh, hey, there's rupees. So, apparently there are plenty of shops where you can buy and sell. Uh, and this second part of the demo actually showed one possible thing that you could sell. Uh, so he concocted a sneaky elixir. Gave you, like, four minutes of additional stealth which he uses in combination here to actually sneak up on these horses. That was the theme of this second demo. I think it's funny, like, sneaking up on horses? But that's actually a, uh, a major gameplay mechanic of Breath of the Wild. And that's a Grand Theft Horse. Although, I don't know, uh, if no one owned the horse in the first place, is it theft? You could argue nature owned this horse. Either way, <laughs> he just stole that horse uh, straight from the wild. And that was one thing that was really interesting to me. Um, I don't, I, I can't say for certain that there's like no quote unquote epona in this game, but there at least isn't in the way that we know it. You can just pick up a horse right there, right off the streets. They have different stats immediately, and they don't like you right away. Um, you can sometimes press L to like soothe the horse. You're trying to tell him, hey, it's okay. It's okay. I'm only stealing you for a little bit. Maybe the rest of your life, but for now, it's just a little bit. Um, and you can see there's three spurs on this horse, so um, it's not like the usual, you know, five spurs, five carrots. And if you overdo it, um, the horse doesn't even trust you. It'll, it'll buck you off completely. So you can find all kinds of different horses, and they've got different stats. But let's say you pick up a horse off the streets, <laughs> off the streets of the Breath of the Wild. Um, and you want to keep that horse, that introduces us to the stable. You can actually bring any horse that you've found uh, and still have under your control to the stable. You can spend some rupees and sort of uh, save your horse. And then anytime you go to a stable, you can go and grab any horse that you have in it. And another thing that really blew me away is he said you can store up to five horses in one stable. So that's what I meant by like there's no real Epona. You have, you have five Eponas now. This is, this is Epona Pokemon. You almost have a, a full team of six now. So you can register horses, and when you do, you get all kinds of additional information. I think at one point, um, he uh, actually listened to the, uh, yeah, <laughs> let me start over. Oh no, got Gaborad. Um, go through the information one more time. Register here. So when you register the horse, look at that. There's strength, speed, stamina, and even uh, temperament. And also the bond, how much that horse actually likes you. So there's all kinds of different stats. This one has awesome speed. I assume uh, that means it's like its actual top speed. The stamina, I think, would be the amount of times that you can uh, hit your spurs to make it go faster. The temperament is sort of just the, the type of behavior the horse has. This one was pretty wild, bucked you off, it's pretty mad. But for uh, the low, low fee of 20 rupees, you can save your horse and name it. He actually asked me, he's like, hey, what do you, what do you want to name it? Um, I didn't actually touch the controller during any of these segments, but I did at least, at least get to meme one more time. This is my horse. My horse is amazing. I, I just wanted to see if he would do it, and he did. Boom. So you can save your horse. Here's amazing. And then uh, once you have actually stored your horse, um, you can either take it away, you can board it, but um, then you can actually call it Epona style. Out of out of the blue uh, by pressing down on the D-pad. Yeah, you can whistle and it'll come running. So that's the deal. But your horse isn't magic. So um, here, you know, you step a little bit away from the horse. You can go ahead and pull it in. Oh, wonderful! You're getting those those classic New York sirens in here. Hopefully, it doesn't ruin the recording that much. But anyway, that was sort of this horse segment. The third and final segment was about guardians, those giant, mysterious, crazy boss creatures that we've seen here or there. I uh, actually saw in the very first Breath of the Wild trailer, before we even knew that was the title of this game. So we start with another giant sailing segment, 
just get a, a nice glimpse into the landscape. It really is beautiful. Um, my presenter said, like, this is still, like, really early in the beginning of the game. All of these that I'm doing. The main reason that we, uh, the, the press that was attending, couldn't play is because there are different areas that have opened up. If we ran far enough in one direction, we could end up seeing something that was a complete spoiler. But so this is this is just an early game area and you can already see how big it is. There's all kinds of towers you can find, Assassin's Creed style. He actually goes for <laughs> expert horse espionage, uh, dropping on it <laughs> from a million miles away. I thought that was incredibly cool. And you can already see this horse, at the very least, uh, has some completely different statistics. You can only uh, spur this one twice. It probably has a different top speed and a different temperament. This one, for example, seems to be a little less rowdy. Um, even just grabbing a regular horse in the wild, they're going to sort of resist you on which direction you're pressing for a while until you, you build up friendship with your horse. It's pretty. There we go. <laughs> it, it reminds me a lot of Pokemon. You just go to Pokemon Refresh, give your horse some berries, give it some pets, and it'll love you and forget the fact that you enslaved it directly out of the wild. So, uh, with this wild horse, it at least helps him get to his next location a little bit faster. I think we're going to see some more combat, um, more look at uh, archery and melee, which felt really, really good. Uh, even just redoing it um, by playing the, uh, the Switch version of the E3 demo, just, it feels great. You've got a lot of options available to you between rolling, the actual ability to jump, so you can set up your own jump attacks at any point, um, the really quick switch between, like, archery and combat. Um, you can actually throw your weapons now. Um, gives, gives me, like, that Wind Waker feel, except you can do it all the time, any time. So he's actually climbing this really tall tower to get a great shot at these Bokoblins. So, um, going to the fire arrow. He said, uh, fire arrow and bomb arrow can set off these fire capsules, but it's kind of redundant if you do a bomb arrow. You're using a bomb to set off a bomb, but you can see the effects of the fire. Not only does it light their weapons on fire, which I imagine would make them a little more dangerous, but there's a big area of effect. The fire can spread. I know we have seen in uh, other demos, even for the Wii U version, how the fire can really uh, spread in the grass as well. But here he's, uh, he's sort of just wrecking them. And he, uh, he honestly should. Those blue ones can pretty much one-shot you completely uh, at this stage in the game. So you kind of do have to play it safe. Uh, you gotta be smart with survival. Here's that awesome slow motion. Boom! I think that was a headshot. Blasted. <laughs> completely off. Oh, just barely missed. And here I think... Look at that. Boom. One hit like that and you're almost already done. So there is this big survival aspect you can eat various foods cooked ones heal you for more so it can keep you alive even when you're in a pinch but eventually you're going to run out of supplies you can only hold so many you can only cook so many um the weather has an effect he said if it was raining your fire arrows would be a lot worse and also you couldn't cook food so um it might feel like you know rain in real life if you were living out in the wilderness uh which is to say bad there's a, another look at combat. I think we get one final snipe out here. Ooh, jumping off the ledge. Boom. And I think when you get a headshot, it makes that little ting sound. So that uh, finally cut over here to the final part where he goes ahead and approaches a guardian. And this part of the demo is just supposed to give you guys a little taste of how terrifying they are, how badly they can wreck you, and how difficult they are to take out. It's uh, It reminds me almost uh, a lot of... The dragons in Skyrim. I know it's easy to keep going back to Skyrim. It's another large, fantasy-themed, open-world RPG. But it really gave me that idea of just these creatures that can absolutely maul you if you aren't prepared. Here we're seeing just how little damage he's doing, even though he's getting um, headshots, eye shots. I, I don't know exactly what you call it, but definitely weak spot hits. We're still hearing that ting. She goes ahead and grabs the hammer. He said a lot of weapons that we have here couldn't even dent through this armor very well. And even here, just this giant spin attack. A big combination. It's only slowly chipping away at the health. And here, uh, it has like a targeting system that can sort of lock onto you and boom! <laughs> That's it! Completely wrecked. Completely shredded. 
Um, it's actually kind of sad because that's the last footage I have from this neat little demo presentation that they had. Um, but it goes to show this game could be extremely hard right out of the gates. If you walk out and find a guardian and you're not quite ready to, uh, to attack it, you're going to get annihilated. But maybe you're a speedrunner. You like finding creative ways to deal with extremely hard enemies at the wrong time. That's open to we didn't get to talk a lot about the story. Uh, you know, I, I had so many questions after the giant trailer that we just got at the end of the Nintendo Switch event. But I did think it was cool to get a little bit more gameplay here, see a little bit more of the world, uh, a few more items that we've seen, uh, haven't seen before, and stuff like that. So I've got a couple different footage clips like this. Some of them uh, Nintendo required that we had to record them over a camera. Some of them... Nintendo uh, said, oh, you can actually get direct feed capture, which we've done here, but I'll be uploading these over the weekend. I just wanted to get this one up today before my flight. This is the big game everybody's talking about. It's the big one I'm really excited about, and I just wanted to share it with you guys. Thank you so much for watching this Nintendo Switch presentation. Thank you, Nintendo, for bringing me out in the first place. It's been a pleasure, and I can't believe the Nintendo Switch is coming in just under two months, but... Uh, we'll have a few more of these like this, and then after that I'm sure we'll have plenty more things to cover through the Nintendo Switch as more information comes. I'll see you guys next time with more Nintendo content.